Welcome back to Fantasy Football by Committee. Powered by Flurry Sports. It can be tough to win a fantasy league on your own, but at FFBC, we will work together to bring home the hardware. Hosted by Zach Bruner and the rest of the Flurry Sports crew, we will give top-level analysis, answer your questions, and, well, go off on other tangents. That was after I tried to get ChatGPT to admit that 9-11 was an inside job, but it stood firm. It, it gave quite a few solid points that it was true. Welcome to Fantasy Football by Committee. The show starts in three, two, one. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Fantasy Football by Committee. Today we are continuing our series in drafting the best possible team, a championship team around each one of the first round players. Today we're doing Cooper Cup. So this is a player that is currently going seventh in PPR leagues. All the ADP we talk about and the live mock draft we do on Sleeper in a little bit will be PPR scoring, 12-team PPR, we're drafting out of the seventh slot. Since Cooper Cup, well, first off, since Cooper Cup was the top wide receiver in fantasy two years ago, there's still going to be people who draft him highly, so maybe he does go ahead of seven. But coming off of a major injury and then an injury in training camp, there might be people hesitant about it. They see the aging Matthew Stafford and his elbow stuff, so maybe... Uh, People pump the brakes even further. So there's a chance he does fall further down than seven. Uh, But today we will be drafting seventh. This is a spot I absolutely despise, to be completely honest. I mean, I don't like being in the middle in general. But just the teams that I've been getting from the seventh spot kind of suck. So if somehow you can choose your draft position, I think I would advise you not to pick seventh in a 12-team league. In a 10-team league, it's a little bit different. Uh, but even still, it, it's it's a weird spot. I think today and going forward, we are going to do this slightly differently. Before we were talking uh, on fantasy da- using fantasy data's ADP, going down through six, seven rounds, just talking through the draft picks. I feel like we get more of uh, more information from the actual mock drafts. So I'm just going to do a couple rounds here with the fantasy data ADP because I do like to get multiple sources of ADP to give you the best possible information, but we don't need to talk it into oblivion. So in a 12 team league, we have picks seven, 18 and 31 to start the draft. Seven obviously is Cooper cup coming back around to 18. I will say there's a chance he falls. There's a chance he's not there in at for fantasy data ADP. He ranks 19th. Um, for sleeper, he's earlier, but if Derrick Henry falls to this spot, I would love to grab Derrick Henry as my RB one. He is my number one target with the 18th pick, our second round pick. So that's who I'm hoping is there. If Derrick Henry is not there, then there's a chance a wide receiver falls, maybe a, a Monroe St. Brown or Garrett Wilson. I could see you going that route as well. It's tough because you go wide receiver, wide receiver. Um, But I do think it's doable. I'm not drafting Mahomes here. I'm not drafting a Mark Henry here. Not Mark Henry. Mark Andrews. Shout out uh, strongest man in the world, Mark Henry. Um, But yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm probably not going wide receiver if I can help it. But, you know, two stud wide receivers isn't terrible. My top choice is Derrick Henry. My number two choice is probably Josh Jacobs. And that is what I am doing with pick number 18 then pick 31 for the third round coming back around there's going to be leagues where Jonathan Taylor falls here if you don't go running back in the second round maybe you go him in the third round but even still even if you do go a Derrick Henry and Jonathan Taylor here isn't terrible it's not terrible I do think he plays this year so with that in mind Maybe, you know, maybe he's worth it. Maybe the juice is worth the squeeze with Jonathan Taylor at 31. I've seen Ramondre Stevenson fall here. I'm a little nervous about Ramondre Stevenson. Najee Harris could fall here. I I do like targeting one of those three running backs, I think. I think. Um, You have to look to see what's on the board. You have to look to see 
uh, which players you think will fall. Because if you are presented a board, top running back on the board, Ramondre Stevenson, Taylor Najee are both gone, and you still see ETN, let's say Gibbs, Brees Hall, Aaron Jones, Kenneth Walker, some something like that, and you think one of those guys will fall to you in the fourth round, then maybe you go a Calvin Ridley, maybe you go a T Higgins, maybe you go something like that. If you think you can get one of those guys, I think all of those guys might be in the same tier for me. Again, uh, our free fantasy football draft kit will be out on Monday and I will have tiers in that. I suggest you make your own tiers, but if you want to know my tiers, they will be in that draft kit along with a million of other great things. Join the fantasy football by committee Facebook group. Uh, to get that also subscribe wherever you are watching or listening to this because we will have multiple shows talking about the draft kit our rankings and stuff like that inside but yeah that's my thoughts for the first three rounds and now if you give me one second for those listening to the audio podcast i suggest going to the fantasy football by committee facebook group to see this video or just go straight to the source the flurry sports youtube channel you can do that as well, I'm going to be doing a live mock draft here on Sleeper Fantasy. Again, the ADP on Sleeper is slightly different than uh, Fantasy Data. But as you can see, the first six players are the shows that we've already done. We got Justin Jefferson, Christian McCaffrey, Jamar Chase, Austin Eckler, Travis Kelsey, Terry Kill. I am drafting at seventh, and I am drafting Cooper Cup. And by the way, I love Cooper Cup this year. I think there may not be a more dominating fantasy wide receiver when healthy. Um, I would still trust him even with Stetson Bennett in at quarterback. And you see here, second round pick, we do have Derrick Henry falling to us. So I absolutely love that. If I can start the draft Cooper Cup, Derrick Henry, then suddenly the seventh spot in a 12-team league doesn't seem too bad. Uh, but we'll see how the rest of this draft goes, won't we? Uh, well, Najee Harris fell to us in the third round. The board, for those just listening, is Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Brees Hall. So I'm happy with Najee Harris as my RB2 here. Why not? Just made the screen bigger for you guys. Apologies for that. But yeah, see, if Najee Harris was gone, let's say Ramondre Stevenson was there and I had all of these running backs, there's a chance I would have past top of the board now in the fourth round this is tempting for sure uh joe mixon aaron jones tj hawkinson justin fields george kittle um justin herbert deandre hopkins it's tempting to go joe mixon as an rb3 so just to talk you through my entire thought process I don't think I'm going quarterback, so Fields and Herbert are off for me. I don't know if I want to go Hawkinson and Kittle here in the fourth. I think I'd prefer Waller in the fifth if I want to go an early tight end, so I'm not going to do that. So I think my thought is between Joe Mixon as an RB3 or a flex or DeAndre Hopkins as a wide receiver two. And I think I'm going to go DeAndre Hopkins as a wide receiver too, though I think Joe Mixon is also a fantastic pick here. I wouldn't be afraid to go three running backs in a row whatsoever. I'm totally cool with that. So round five, we have a balanced approach so far, two running backs, two wide receivers. The board is Miles Sanders, Trevor Lawrence, J.K. Dobbins, Alexander Madison, Darren Waller. So I don't know if I need to go running back. There's just a lot of running backs in a similar tier for me right here. I do like Miles Sanders. I'm a little, you know, I don't like to see that injury tag on him already, but it is what it is. Same thing with Alexander Madison, you know, getting a full workload for the first time. I don't love to see him already hurt. And J.K. Dobbins has plenty of question marks in terms of health, and he's not practicing yet. So I think I'm going to go Darren Waller here. I'm going to do Darren Waller over Trevor Lawrence. I don't need him as my quarterback this early. Sixth round now. Again, we still have a very, very even lineup. We have Elvin Kamara on the top of the board, and I don't hate that. 
um, especially as an RB3, right? Because he's, you know, my criticism of him, um, aside from the suspension he's serving early on, but if you, there's a chance you have an IR spot, spot in fantasy that you can put a suspended player into. Some leagues don't let you put suspended players in IR. Some leagues don't have IR at all. But if you are a league that has an IR slot, I mean, I think for sure Alvin Kamara would be the pick then, just so he doesn't count against your roster for the first few weeks. Um, Yeah, so I think he would be my top choice for running back, Alvin Kamara. Number two would be James Conner here. I don't mind going Mike Williams. I see Mike Evans a little lower. There's a chance he falls for us. So I'm going to go Alvin Kamara and hope one of my uh, wide receiver targets fall. I like Mike Williams. I like Mike Evans. Both on the board. And we got Mike Evans. So I'm going to take Mike Evans here as a wide receiver three in the seventh round. I like that quite a bit. Eighth round coming up, I might go quarterback with this pick. We'll see how the board falls. Okay, so we have our choices. Dak Prescott fell. So we have Dak, Deshaun Watson, Tua all in a row. We can wait until the ninth round and possibly get Anthony Richardson. The risk with that is if Anthony Richardson's not there, then we would go Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins isn't terrible. Um, He is a high floor, low ceiling option, which if you hit on everything else, then you pretty much only need a quarterback that won't lose you weeks. But I think my choice here is going to be Dak, probably. You know, let's go Dak. I think the Cowboys still will have a good offense. I think they're still going to throw it a bunch. I don't have too much of a worry about that so now ninth round we could have gone Anthony Richardson which I wouldn't have minded either so if I didn't go Dak I probably would have gone wide receiver probably would have been would have been either Dotson or Cooks so I could have had one of those two and then Anthony Richardson here does not matter Uh, I still like the way this team is shaping up again we have three wide receivers three running backs quarterback tight end Zay Flowers is the top player on the board. Then Juju. We'll only look at flexes here. Um, Then Odell. Rashad Penny. Dalton Schultz. uh, Khalil Herbert. Zach Charbonnet. Samaj P. Ryan. Um, I feel like I'm just going to go for upside at this current point in the draft. And the player with the most upside to me, I think, has to be Zay Flowers. I love Odell. I think Odell has a higher floor than, say, Flowers in that that offense, but I think Flowers probably has the highest ceiling out of anybody there. So that's the pick. He's my wide receiver four. You can get a little risky with your wide receiver four, with your bench wide receivers. Now, uh, what is this? Tenth round? Yeah, tenth round pick. Zach Charbonnet is the top player on the board. I do not mind going there. What do we think we'll get on the way back? Um, Because this is auto draft, it's going to get a little weird after this pick. So the team's going to end up looking a little bit better than it is because there's going to be more people going uh, kicker and defense early. That's the one thing about these I do not like. But for today, I'm going to just try to keep it realistic. And... uh, Man, this is tough. I'm going to go Adam Thielen. And I like Charbonnet, but again, he is in the same tier as Ezekiel Elliott for me. He's in the same tier as these other handcuffed running backs, Tyler Algier, Elijah Mitchell. So if I can get them around later, great. Like they're a very similar player for me. Whereas if I miss out on Adam Thielen, that I would drop to a Jacoby Myers or something like that. And I like Adam Thielen a fair amount more. So we go Thielen as our wide receiver five. We'll start grabbing a couple of running backs in a row probably here. Uh, we go Ezekiel Elliott in the 11th round. Again, I feel like once draft season's at his peak, I feel like Ezekiel Elliott will probably be a 10th rounder. That's my guess. He feels like that. Um, and I... 
I would still take Ezekiel Elliott in the 10th round, by the way. I like his value a fair amount. I'm probably going another handcuff running back here. We went Henry and Najee to start, so there really isn't anybody. We can go Jalen Warren later, maybe for Najee if we wish. But right now we'll go Elijah Mitchell. So Elijah Mitchell is our running back five. Maybe we'll make Jalen Warren our running back six. Um, so much like these other mock drafts, if you've missed those, if this is the first one, definitely subscribe and watch those other ones, but I'm not going to be the last player to pick a defense. I don't like doing that, uh, just because I could drop a player prior to kickoff week one and pick up that same defense that I would have drafted. So there's no reason to do that. I would rather, you know, draft a player who, uh, um, has the chance to skyrocket if there's an injury ahead of him or he has a really good final preseason game or something like that. So for this mock draft, we're going no defense and I never draft a kicker. I pretty much drop my kicker every single week during the fantasy season to give myself that roster flexibility so I can steal those waivers, maybe trade them, stuff like that. I find that to be more valuable. So I'm not drafting a kicker as well. So we still have three picks left of real players. We are in the 13th round and I don't hate Raheem Mostert. I mean, he may be the most valuable running back in Miami. I like Romeo Dobbs. He's probably the pick, eh? Yeah, we're going to go Romeo Dobbs. There's a real chance he's the wide receiver one in Green Bay. He's certainly the more skilled wide receiver between him and Christian Watson. Less less, uh, physically gifted, but more skilled. So we have what? Three, four, five running backs. We have six wide receivers. I will say my final pick, probably, I mean, if you you can go Kyler Murray, put him in your IR slot, uh, but I like going Kareem Hunt right now. Obviously, he is not on a team. There's a chance the Colts trade Jonathan Taylor and sign Kareem Hunt as their RP1, which makes him very valuable. So he'll probably be our final pick, and he's a guy who you can obviously drop prior to week one if that is not the case. So we'll go Jalen Warren to handcuff uh, Najee Harris, and then we will go Kareem Hunt to finish our championship draft around Cooper Cup. So from top to bottom here, we have Dak Prescott, Derek Henry, Najee Harris, Cooper Cup, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans. Darren Waller, Elvin Kamara. On the bench, we got Zay Flowers, Adam Thielen, Ezekiel Elliott, Elijah Mitchell, Romeo Dobbs, Jalen Warren, Kareem Hunt. And there's a chance you have uh you can put suspended players in your IR. So you could put Elvin Kamara there immediately and pick up somebody else. Um, and again, I wouldn't put Elvin Kamara in my IR and then immediately pick up my defense. If it's August, like what am I doing? There's no point to do that. So I would be picking up a running back. Uh, I don't even know who is still there. A lot of those handcuffs got taken, but there's still handcuffs there. I mean, I don't think Zamir White was drafted. So Zamir White's an obvious one. (laughs) Josh Jacobs hasn't even reported to practice yet. So Zamir White is technically the running back one right now. So that's an option if you put Alvin Kamara in your IR. It looks like Kendra Miller was one of the final picks of the draft. He's a New Orleans back who sees an uptick in value when Kamara is off the field. But yeah, this was a draft that actually I did not mind. I said at the beginning, I don't like drafting from the seventh spot, but I think this did fall into place pretty well. We have a lot of established players. I mean, our there's pretty much no question marks other than health with our starting group. And then our bench, we have some... We have some guys with potential. Zay Flowers has potential. Elijah Mitchell has potential if you know there's a if there's an injury. Romeo Dobbs has potential. Second year guy Jalen Warren has potential with injury, and Kareem Hunt has potential if he is signed. So this is what I would do drafting out of the seventh spot with Cooper Cup. Let me know what you think of this draft. Please, please, please join the Fantasy Football by Committee Facebook group. There you can ask us questions. You can answer other people's questions. Uh, 
anyone you hear on the show, myself, Luke, Trevor, and other people during the season, we have questions too. Uh, we do this, you know, we may be a little bit more informed because we put more time into this to give you guys a good show and stuff, but we have questions too. We don't have all of the answers. That's why we will ask you guys for answers as well. It's going to be a great fantasy football community over there. So please join fantasy football by committee on Monday. A free fantasy football draft kit will be dropped in there. So definitely subscribe so or join the group so you can uh, get that. Subscribe to the show so you don't miss any more shows or miss the draft kit announcement. If you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, please rate the podcast and subscribe. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. We are 20, currently while recording this, we are 20 subscribers away from 10,000, which is a pretty big milestone for us. I would love it if you did that. Please show that support, and we will be back very, very soon with another uh, draft strategy. The next one, I believe, will be Bijan Robinson, so stay tuned for that. Goodbye.